Spirit. Mm -hmm. Without the Holy Spirit, we're incapable in this world. Right, amen. We need Him more than ever, and He is neglected in this day and time more than ever. 
The church began with the Holy Spirit. They called him the Holy Ghost. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And people want to discount the Holy Ghost. Back in the 70s, it rolled around. The people wanted to calm the church down. In other words, they were quenching the Spirit. The Bible says, quench not the Spirit. Not to put out the Spirit's fire. But for some reason, they decided that they wanted to calm the church down or those who believed in the Holy Ghost and moved in the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Now, you know as well as I know, you can have control fire and you can have wildfire. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'd rather have a little bit of wildfire than no fire at all. We need to open up and we need to worship God. We need to begin to praise and, and, and shout out the wonderful name of Jesus. And we need to let the Holy Spirit flow through us. And when we do, there's going to come that evidence that the Bible talked about in the book of Acts called the Spirit of Speaking in Tongues. Now, a lot of people are afraid of this, but the Bible says it. And what the Bible says, do you believe what the Bible says? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this did not pass away. The healing did not pass away. Nothing has passed away. Deliverance hasn't passed away. God said, I'm going to heal. I'm going to set free. He said, I will raise up the dead. It has not passed away. Now, a lot of people in the church are dead. They're dead while they're yet living. The Bible says that. They're dead while they're yet living. Now, I found out something that when I'm down the most is when I need the Holy Ghost the most. I need the Holy Spirit the most. When I'm the sleepiest, that's when I need to be the awakest. That the Holy Spirit can move in me and do the things that he needs to do because usually when I'm the downest is when I get the telephone call that somebody needs prayer. Or somebody says, Pastor, you need to come to my house right now. That's usually when it comes. Ask Pastor Linda. It's the truth. When we're broken, when we're down, when we're hurting, and when we're crying, that's usually when the biggest problem arises. That's what happens. That's the way that it is. But that's why the Holy Ghost has come. That's why He is the strength. That's why He is the helper. That's why He is everything. Now, there's nobody in here perfect. I'm far from perfect, even though I claim that I am. But there's never been a perfect man and God has always come to the rescue of every one of us whenever we got in trouble. And I just can't stand self-righteous, indignant people that want to point their fingers at everybody else and talk about how bad they are when they've got things in their own life that's worse than others. And Paul talked about in the, in that in the first chapter of the book of Romans. And he said, that's something that gives shame to God. Now... David, the great king of Israel, the one that we speak so much about, the man who truly loved God, was a man who sinned greatly. But God didn't destroy him. When I sinned greatly, God did not destroy me. I hate to tell you this, but I'm still ashamed of it. But God didn't destroy me. So God said he had something for me to do. And I've been trying to do that. Sometimes I do it well, and sometimes I fail. I, at least I fail. I feel like I fail when people walk away. But God is not a destroyer. God's chastisement. How many of you know God chastises? Now, when you turn your back on God, God is going to chastise. That's it. There's, that's the bottom line. It's going to happen. You may not see it, but it's going to happen. And I've been chastised before. Usually the first things happen uh, when people are chastised is they lose. They lose things. We've lost everything a couple of times. Because of my stupidity and my, my disobedience. Not on Pastor Linda's part, on my part. Because, and, that, and that's the truth. I'm just admitting something to you. But when I repented, God did something. How many of you sinned? How many of you still do? Now, listen to me. I know that when you sin, you feel awful. When it's revealed to you, you feel terrible. 
But God said, I don't want you to go around feeling terrible. He said, what I want you to do is to repent of your sin and be restored. So the big problem and the big issue today is people refuse to repent and they begin to justify their acts. And that's when they really get in trouble. But I'm telling you here today, no matter what you've done, there is nothing that God won't forgive you for. Now, he can't forgive you for what you will not repent of. And usually pride gets in the way there. Now, with David, in Psalm 51, I'm going to put a lot of words in here today, uh, more than I usually do. But David had sinned big, he had hidden it, he had been confronted by the prophet, uh, so many things had taken place in his life, and he was feeling like a scumbag. He was feeling as low as he had ever felt in his entire life. And in Psalm 51, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Watch me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you deserve truth in the inward parts. Did you hear that, people? He wants truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. When you're truthful, God gives you wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and be clean. I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Don't you feel broken when you lie and you cheat and you sin? Hide your face from my sins and blot out my, all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast away, cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Then... I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. The God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not deserve sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. You can't buy your way in, people. Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite spirit. These, O oh God, you will not despise. This is why. This is why people have to be broken before they'll turn around. You must be broken. You must be crushed. I don't trust anyone who has not been crushed. I trust no one who has not been broken. David was broken. I've been broken a couple of times. Um, I've been crushed a couple of times. The problem is with most people, instead of going to God, they turn away from God. This is God's way. God says, I want to restore you. On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached a powerful message to the people that asked a question, what must we do? They saw the uh, power of the Holy Ghost fall. They heard the tongues in their own languages. They saw the evidence, and they said that fire, tongue, cloven tongues of fire set upon the head. Now, that's something that hasn't been repeated that I know of. I do know of fire jumping out from under the eaves of church buildings. I saw fire right here one morning as I was laying in here praying. I saw it so real that I had to go get Pastor Linda and Sister Ann to come in here and look and see if it was burning. That's the truth. That's the truth. I mean, it was hot in here. The Holy Ghost was moving. 
But one of the things uh, that people are is afraid. They're afraid of the Holy Spirit. Well, God said, listen, if you're seeking him, he's not going to give you a stone for a fish. He's going to give you the real thing. And there ain't no demon going to get in you with the Holy Ghost present. I'm telling you that now. Acts 2 and verse 37. Now when they heard this, the things that was going on, they were cut in their heart. Peter had preached and he said, you crucified the son of glory. And he said to Peter and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what do we do? And Peter said, repent, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And then repent, be baptized in Jesus name and then you'll receive the Holy Ghost. You see, we've got three separate deals here going on. Now, we, bought, we were taught early in age that when you receive Jesus, you received everything. You got it all. But that ain't true. God always has more for you. God always has more for you. And the Holy Spirit is present to give you what God wants you to have. He wants you to have power. He wants you to have the, the revelation. He wants you to move and walk in victory. And it only comes uh, through the blessed Holy Spirit, people. It only comes by the infilling uh, of the Spirit of the living God. David knew that he needed the Holy Spirit. Just like Peter did. Peter said, when you rent, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name, and then you receive the Holy Spirit, he said something else. If you read on down, he said, this is the promise of the Father. And it is, some people say, well, that's not for everybody. But that's not what Peter said. Peter said, this is the promise of the Father that is for all who are near and far, far as us. We are far. Yes, we are. All who are near and far. This is a promise for all who will believe and who are called by his holy name. Or should I say that God will call. You see, you didn't come to God on your own. You didn't come to God on your own. Without the Holy Spirit, you would not be in here today. It takes the Holy Spirit. It wasn't the Word of God that brought you in here. No, it wasn't. You may have had some of the Word of God on the inside of you, okay. But it was the Spirit of God that began to woo you. It's the Spirit of God that makes you feel His presence. It's the Spirit of God that opens you up. It is the Spirit of God that humbles you. It is the Spirit of God that fills you and makes you feel like you're floating on a cloud. It is the Spirit of God who strengthens your weak body. Paul knew that we needed the Spirit. David, Peter, Paul, Philip, all of those disciples and all those apostles, they knew. Paul wrote in his writings to the Galatians in chapter 3. He said, oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? The truth of God's word is very plain. You can't take the Bible and walk through there with a red pen or a black pen and blot out some of these scriptures and say, I don't like that. I don't want to give, so I'm just going to blot that out. I don't want to uh, stay away from fornication, so I'll just blot that out. I don't want to do this, so I'll just blot that. You can't do that. The Bible is a whole from Genesis to Revelation. And you've got to take it all. And you've got to walk it out the principles of the living God. Now, when you refuse to do that, God takes something out of your life. And let me tell you something. God doesn't have to punish you. God doesn't even have to chastise you. This world is in such a shape that all the Lord has to do. Remember what he said in uh, Malachi. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for you. 
when you're faithful in your giving. If you're not faithful in your giving, God doesn't rebuke the devourer. And all the Lord has to do is to, you see, he's got his hand on you, right? But all he has to do when you turn your back on him is to take his hand off. And honey, life happens. And life without God is not good. That's why money doesn't satisfy. That's why sex, drugs, alcohol, power, nothing satisfies for over 30 seconds at a time. It's just like eating. You eat once and you have a fine meal and you appreciate it, but guess what? You're going to have to do it again. I'm looking forward to it today, too. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Now listen, listen real close here. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? No, you didn't. Or by the hearing of faith? No. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, having begun in the Spirit, that you're now being perfected by the flesh? You hear me? Do you hear what he's saying here? This is the one thing that in this day and time, the Spirit of God has prophesied to the Laodicean church. You're blind, you're fat, you're rich, you can't see anything but you've lost your position because you're walking in the flesh, not in the spirit. Amen. We need to get back to the spirit of the living God. We need the flowing of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the spirit in operation within our church, within individuals today. Without the spirit of the living God, people, we're nowhere. So many people, so many churches have quenched the moving of the Holy Spirit and they've turned their dependence back to the flesh, trusting in their finances, in their positions, in their power, and what they can do themselves. Jeremiah explains very clearly what happens when people begin to trust in the arm of the flesh. He said, you're cursed. You can't trust in your checkbook. You can't trust in what you can do. I'm going to tell you something. I, when we first came back out here, we were down at the old church, and I, was, I had my tractor out there, and, and I was telling Pastor Leonard, well, nobody's helping me. I'm going to do this myself. Uh-huh. I made one pass with my tractor, and you know what happened? It blew a head gasket. And I was sitting there shaking my head, and the Lord said to me, You shouldn't have tried to do it yourself. I'm the one that has to do it. He who labors to build something without me labors in vain. You see, the church is about the people. And the people are the ones who are responsible to do the works. But I had the horse behind the cart. Well, if they ain't going to do it, God, I'll do it myself. He said, no, you won't. No, you won't. You see, God has a specific calling for each of us. And we can either shirk it or we can get it done. One of the things that's happened in the church today is, did you know that most churches, the big churches, the bigger churches, they don't have much volunteer labor. They don't have much volunteer help. That's why so many people are going there. That's right. Amen. They're lazy. That's, hear me. That's the truth. They pay people. They pay people. They have staff. They have a paid janitor. Amen. They have a paid yard man. Amen. They have a paid secretary. Sorry, Ann. They <laughs> everything that they do is paid for. They have a staff of pastors who are on salary and teachers who are on salary. Do you realize how that weakens the church? 
It weakens the ministry of the church when everybody says, oh, somebody else is going to do it. They're not being led by the Holy Spirit. They're not hearing God. What they're hearing is, I don't want to do this, and so somebody else will take it up. Well, I know the Holy Spirit's going to speak to somebody. It just ain't going to be me. And you know this is true. You know how many times God has spoke to you to do something and you didn't do it. I don't even have to know what it is. I just know, I know people. And I know who God is and I know what he's doing. And so that's the way that it is. You see, we've been promised to, if we will trust in God, that he will give us his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper. I'll say this again, but he is our helper. He is our lawyer, our advocate. He is the one who comes alongside and strengthens and leads. He is our paraclete. Without him, we can't do one blessed thing. Now, the Gospel of Mark begins with the baptism of Jesus. So you can turn over there if you want to, chapter 1. And I'm going to read from chapter 1, verse 9. And it says, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan and immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came out of heaven, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted by Satan and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered to him. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will minister your anointing further in this, as your word is anointing, but touch our hearts to receive your word, to understand your word, and to make your word applicable in our lives. Father, glorify your holy name, and be with this your servant, Father, through all this that we are doing in Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Afterwards, Jesus began his ministry throughout Galilee after the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the River Jordan. After the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit empowers you to do the service. And we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need the flowing of the Holy Spirit that he pours out. Because you know what you feel like when the Holy Ghost is moving inside of you. Your knees can knock together. You can just do almost anything. Glory to God. I get excited about the Holy Ghost. I get excited about him because I know what he's done inside of me and what he wants to do. Even greater things that he wants to do. Jesus was well received as he went through Galilee preaching in the different areas, the different cities, the people were being healed, the people were receiving him as Lord and Savior. And he rose up one morning and he said, I think I'll go back to Nazareth, that's where I was raised. And he said, I'll go into the synagogue there and I'll preach. In Mark 6, verse 6, it says, Then he went up from there, came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended in him. Yeah. They had heard of all the miracles that had happened in Galilee, that many people have adhered to him and were, were beginning to follow him as Lord and Savior. And they were offended in him. Today, many people are offended in the Holy Spirit. They're offended by the word of God. They don't like certain things. Like I said, they want to take their little black marker and mark it out of the Bible. Uh -huh. But it doesn't work. You see, folks, it's like, uh, you, you know, they have that, uh, they've got two detergents. One of them is shout. You can shout it out. <laughs> and the other one is cheer. It all comes out in the wash. It's all going to come out in the wash. 
You see, you can either believe the Word of God and live the Word of God, or you can turn your back on the Word of God and not do the Word of God. And both of them hold their own ramifications. And something's going to happen when you do what you do. You see, they rejected the only hope that they really had. If you're feeling down and out and bad and, and, and you feel like you can't get over anything, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to be filled up and you need to take him with you when you go home. So many people come into the church, they get a little bit, then they go out and say, I'll be back next week, you stay here. No, you've got to take him with you. You've got to take him with you everywhere you go. And let him flow through you. Let him talk to you. You see, the Bible tells you in Isaiah, he says, there will be some voice come behind you and say, you turn this way and you turn this way. And don't go that way. That's the Holy Spirit. He's going to direct your life. He's going to teach you. He's going to guide you. He's going to encourage you. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'll, I'll add this too, speaking in tongues is, is, is one thing, but it's only a sign. That's all it is. It's not something that you need to be seeking. I'll tell you this, all you've got to do is praise and worship God. Open your mouth and begin to say something. You're eventually going to speak in tongues. That's, true. That's the truth. You'll be going, what would I say? <laughs> First time I heard myself speaking in tongues, I shut up. I said, that sounds stupid. I'm not kidding you, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> and a little later on, I was praying again, and there I started it up again. I said, Woo. Well, the Bible says that you will speak with stammering lips. Uh -huh. You see, it, what's happening is God gives you a prayer language, and you have to learn it. That's right. Amen. It has to be developed, and it won't be developed if you don't. Now, somebody told a story here uh, a little bit ago about a little child who was asking about speaking in tongues because Pastor Linda had preached something and, and he heard it here in the church. And so he asked a couple of people, do you speak in tongues? And he asked one person, do you speak in tongues? And she said, yeah, I did, but I haven't in a long time. I did, but I haven't in a long time. Well, what Paul said was, I speak in tongues more than you all. You have to understand that tongues is a prayer language. That's what it is. It's not for you to be going down through uh, the aisle in Walmart going, <laughs> that's nothing but foolishness. No, that's your, that's your prayer language. Now, when we get excited in here, you hear me speak in tongues. You hear Pastor Linda speak in tongues. You hear Mary Lou speak in tongues. And you hear Jasmine speak in tongues. You, you, you see us active in, in, in worshiping God. And that's what it's all about. But it's not to go out here and walk up to somebody and get in their face and say, <laughs> And Paul said, what's wrong with you? you gotta, they got to understand what's being said, right? you got to understand what's going on here. And so you got to use your head a little bit, right? Amen. The prophet is always in control of what's going on. Don't ever tell me... That, I was taken up. I was just, I was out of it. No, 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 you're in control. You're in control. You are in control. Yeah, you can be swept up. You bet you bet. I've been swept up, knocked down, rolled over. That's the way it works sometimes. But God's here to help you and to glorify his name. And it takes an active faith that's let loose. Mark 6, verse 4 but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. They think less of you than anybody. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's what it is. He said, Jesus said, I don't know what is going on with these people, but I can't do a lot of good works here. I can't work a lot of miracles here. And the scripture says, but he only healed a few sick people. Whatever, wherever Jesus went to minister, he went in the power of the Holy Spirit. He went to Nazareth in the power of the Holy Spirit, but he was rejected. This happens sometimes. 
people begin to reject the ministry. That can happen, and it will happen. We've seen it. We've experienced it, so we know all about it. Remember what John the Baptist said uh, concerning Jesus Christ, John 1, 32. He said, and I bore witness, saying, I saw, he saw it. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained on him, and I did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, sent John to baptize with water. It wasn't Herod, was it? It wasn't Jesus, was it? It was God the Father. He spoke to him through the Holy Spirit. And he said, I want you to go start baptizing in water and preach. Repent! You see, this is what people don't like because the gospel is about repent and be changed. Repent and turn around and go the other way. But Jesus said, he said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Now, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit today is not like it was in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people for a moment. They did what he wanted to do, then he departed. Today, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will stay with you forever. He will never leave you, and he will never forsake you until the very end comes. The Holy Spirit is in you to empower you. To empower you, to anoint you. To anoint you to speak to other people. To anoint you to walk through this life in victory. To overcome every obstacle that comes up in your life. Every habit can be broken. Every uh, word that you've been speaking that you want to get rid of. You can get rid of it through the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit, he said... It's better that I go away from you. Can you imagine walking with Jesus? Wow. They walked with him. They slept with him. They ate with him. Everything that was done, they did with Jesus. What a, oh. And could you imagine when he looked at them and said, it's better for me that I go away? Their hearts dropped to their stomachs. Can you imagine that? Oh, I don't want him to go away. Why do you have to go away? He said, because it's better that the Spirit come. Because if I don't go away, I can't send the Spirit to you. And if the Spirit doesn't come, we won't be able to accomplish as much. You see, Jesus in his flesh could only be in one place at a time. But when the Holy Spirit came, he can be in all of us at one time. He can be in millions of people all in one time. That's what he meant. And oh, people, don't neglect the Holy Spirit within your lives. Remember, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. He is the one who washes you. He's the one who protects you. He's the one that leads you and guides you. He's the one that speaks to that person that has what you need to say, go and give that to so-and-so. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He provides for you every single day. He is a glorious person in this world. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. He, He takes us through this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He empowers us. He encourages us. He, he causes us to be able to work for him. I, I, I find myself trying to insert something about Jesus Christ, something about salvation, something about God the Father, something about the Holy Spirit in every conversation that I have. Now, sometimes I'm not able to do it, but usually the Lord opens up a door and I'm able to get it in. Have you ever had that experience? God is so good to help us to do what he wants us to do. But we've got to keep the fire burning because we can let it go out. You let it go out by not praying. 
You let it go out by not reading the word. You let it go out by not worshiping. So much of the church has gone to sleep. I remember one pastor um, went to his praise and worship team and he said to them, I'm afraid we've gotten away from the very thing that God wants us to do. We've gotten into too much hype. We've gotten into a show. And he said, so what we're going to do is we're going to do away with our instruments for a solid month. And we're just going to sit down and we're going to praise and worship God throughout the service. And that's where the song was written. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you. Because we get to the place where we think it's all about us. I know that when things happen and situations come up, sometimes Pastor Linda and I really get hurt and we go before God and we pray. And God often tells us, get your eyes off of yourself. Get your eyes off of yourself and get your eyes on me. And of course he does that through the blessing and the speaking of the Holy Spirit into your heart. This is just how important he is. In your moments of discouragement and pain and heartache, when you're crying, he speaks to you and tells you, hey, quit feeling sorry for yourself. I love more than you do. I feel more than you do. Trust in me. Trust in me. Regardless of what your situation looks like, Trust in God. Put your faith in God. Because we can't build anything. We can't watch over anything and protect it. We can't keep people saved. We can't get people built up. We can only preach the word and the Holy Spirit is to do the work. And people, that's what's important today. That you open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit work through you. That's what's important because without the Holy Spirit, you will not get anywhere in this life. It was said somewhere, too much of the letter of the word and people dry up. Uh Too much of the spirit and they blow up. You put them both together and you grow up. The spirit and the word. Jesus said, my word is spirit Uh and it is truth. Moses said, the word that I speak to you is life. Glory Glory to God. I don't want to blow up, but I want to grow up. And, and I find myself growing almost every day. We went through Popeye's yesterday. Anybody go to Popeye's? Popeye's chicken? I hate that place. Every time I go in there, they do something that ticks me off. Every time. One time they, we sat out there waiting for an order for 30 minutes. And I finally got mad, and I I went inside, and I said, where's my order? What order? (laughs) That's the truth. Yeah, I think it was coming off of everything. That's probably why a lot of my hair fell out, Felix. It probably burned. (laughs) Anyway, yesterday we go through there, and they came out with this new chicken sandwich. Well, the new chicken sandwich is pretty good. But Pastor Linda said, I don't like the new chicken sandwich because it's too hunky. I said, I love hunky stuff. You know, so I said, get me me two of them. We talked about it, and we decided, well, we'll get one of them. Well, by the time we got to the window, I said, you know, go ahead and get another one. Go ahead and get another one. So she got up to the window, and Pastor Linda says to the lady, she says, would you put another one of those chicken sandwiches on my bill? And so this young girl looks at her and says, we can't do that. I said, what? You can't what? We can only take your order down there at that speaker. Pastor Linda said, we'll go around and come back. I said, no, we won't. I almost told them to cancel the whole order to begin with, but I I held my tongue. I said, this is the most asinine thing I ever heard of. Pastor Linda put her hand on my leg and said, calm the raging beast. (laughs) 
That's the way life goes sometimes. You don't get what you want every time. That's the way that it is. So I had to come home after I ate that chicken sandwich and I had to eat two bologna sandwiches. <laughs> so this morning I'm just full of bologna. <laughs> If I didn't have the Holy Spirit to calm me down and to do the work within me that needs to be done, I would be an awful person, people. I would be a horrible individual to deal with. And I thank God the Holy Spirit is able to do what he does. Jesus said in John 6, 63, It's the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh counts for nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. He also said in John 4, 23, taking, talking to the Samaritan woman there at Jacob's well, he said, true worshipers, worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yeah. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. In truth. It is hard to be lied to. I believe this. If, if somebody will lie to you, they'll steal from you. I believe that. Yeah, he told me that, and that's where I got it. I believe it. If they'll lie to you, they'll steal from you. And oftentimes, these things happen, and it, it is not a good feeling. Do you like to be lied to? No, nobody likes to be lied to, and no like, nobody likes to be shined on. Don't you just love that when somebody just shines you on? They tell you just enough. And you know there's this much behind it. I, I would probably, um, if I knew it all, I would probably be like Elijah. And I would call down fire from heaven. <laughs> so it's good that I have the Holy Spirit. It's good that Jesus went and he sent the Holy Spirit to make me what I am today. Amen? Amen? <laughs> True worship and service to God does not just happen. You don't choose to do it. You do not choose to come in and worship God. You're drawn. And sometimes you can shut the Holy Spirit out and say, No, I'm not going to do this. Now be honest with me. How many of you have ever had the Holy Spirit speak to you and tell you to do something and you said no? I'm not going to do this because I feel like this. Well, we have to do what God wants us to do. But if there's a wonderful thing that takes place when you do what the Holy Spirit says. There's always a blessing. Yes, there, is. Always. there is always a blessing. Don't you, aren't you blessed to be here in this service today? Amen. You know, people can manipulate all kinds of things. They can manipulate hype. They can manipulate uh, enthusiasm, put it on, act like it's all good, but they can't manipulate and fake the love of God. You can't do that because it's eventually going to be shown. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my word. And the word which you hear is not mine, but it's the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you remembrance of things that I have said to you. He's going to teach you on a daily basis. Sometimes Pastor Linda and I, we've read the Bible all the way through. I don't know how many times, but I don't know how many times she has. She reads more than I do, but I've read it through several times. But sometimes still, when I'm reading the Word of God, it's like a line out of the Word of God will be illuminated and just come out to me. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what He's doing. He's trying to tell you something. When you feel an uneasiness, you feel a disruption of your peace going on on the inside of you. Some people get up and go to the refrigerator and stand there with the door open. 
of what the Holy Spirit is saying is pray. Pray. You may not even know what this morning. We began to pray this morning. The Holy Spirit came into our house, into our home. We were sitting there in the living room. I'd come over here and taken care of things and gone back over there and was resting before I went to get mom. And she said, I could feel the Holy Spirit moving. And she said, I feel the Holy Ghost. She said, the Lord's trying to say something. We need to pray. And so we there for a few minutes, I mean, we had us a, a rip-roaring time right there in the living room, in the kitchen, and the dining room. We were just praying and doing battle in the Spirit. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not Amen. fleshly. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. That's right. And breaking bondages. And so the Holy Spirit said something is going on. Something is happening in the lives of somebody. Mm-hmm. Could have been somebody here in the church. Could have been somebody that's not here in the church. Could have been our children. It could have been anything. But as we moved in that prayer, we took authority over that, and all of a sudden, peace came. Mm-hmm. And it was just like both of us calmed down at the same time. It was the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And something is going to come out of that. Because where the Spirit is, the gifts of His Spirit are working. He, yeah. He's giving rhema, that's yeah. word, yeah. fresh word, revelation. Yeah. He's directing you, He's guiding you and keeping you. Oh, people, I can't, I can't impart to you enough seriousness of the need of the Holy Spirit within your life. You think your life has been good to this point. I'm telling you, when you're so filled up with the Holy Spirit and he's speaking to you 24 hours a day, you're continually instant in prayer, you'll find yourself talking to him all the time. And he will guide you and he will bless you and he will truly add all things to you because you're seeking first the kingdom of God. We desperately need the Holy Spirit back in the church today. We desperately need the individuals to be filled up with the Spirit. Where the Holy Spirit is, there's love. You see, that's what Jesus said. If you love me, you'll keep my commands. You'll do what I say. People who are not doing what God says, they don't love God. They don't love the church. They don't love the pastor. People who are lying, they don't love the pastor. They don't love the church. And you need to understand this. We've had so many people in the past that walk up to people who were unfaithful, people who who were lying and cheating and doing all kinds of things, and they'd put their arm around them and they would say, it's going to be all right. That's a lie. It's not going to be all right. It's not going to be all right until it becomes right. That's when it becomes right. And that's when it becomes all right. Not until... We can't halfway serve God. Right, We've got to serve him completely. This is why Pastor Linda says, if you're not doing it all, you're going to miss something. That's right. Amen. We will. The giving, the, the working, the service, the prayer, the study of God's word, the faithful worship of God's people. We've got to be excited about the sight. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that'll be. That's the way some people are doing. Oh, we got to be excited. Why do you think I, I sing these songs? By the time they find me missing. Yeah, I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Yes, to have life, to have the spirit of the living God, to be alive in Jesus Christ. He's working miracles for me. He meets my needs. He heals my body. He lifts me up when I'm down. He puts my head high above my enemies. And those that want to harm me, he said no weapon formed against you will prosper. But it's the heritage of God's child to be vindicated from every tongue that rises in judgment against him. I will not fear no matter if an army encamps around me because my God will hide me. Oh, we need the Holy Spirit. We need him 
more than ever before. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We need him to navigate through this life, through the obstacles that we have. We need him to speak to us, to guide us through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When the day of Pentecost had finally come, fully come, they were in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto him divided tongues as a fire, and it sat upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is what they were waiting for. This is what we need. Acts 1 and 7, Jesus said, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses in me, to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to all the end of the earth. There's no doubt that you know when someone is anointed of the Holy Spirit. You feel the conviction of anointing, preaching, and teaching. You recognize the power of God when he heals and delivers. When baptisms and the Holy Spirit take place. And yes, even the raising of the dead. And there's a certain convicting power, though it flows through one who's walking faithful in that spirit. Mark 16, the end of the book, Jesus gave the Great Commission. And he said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mm -hmm. Black and white. And these signs will follow those who believe. Signs. Mm -hmm. Do you have signs following your life? Mm -hmm. Oh, you should. In my name, they'll cast out demons. Most people who know that people have demons bring them to me or Pastor Linda and say, you cast them out. But he said, you will cast out demons. They speak with new tongues. He says, you're going to speak with tongues. There's no arguing about it. He just said it. I do have trouble with one scriptural verse here. And I have to admit it. And they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. I don't want no snake messing with me. <laughs> now, the Bible says that when Paul landed on the island of Malta, a snake fastened on his hand when he was gathering wood, and he just shook it off. Well, I think that's what he was talking about, don't you? I don't think he meant for preachers to be kissing snakes, do you? Okay. Matter of fact, the last one I've heard of got bit in the mouth and died. And if they do drink any deadly thing, that it won't hurt them. I've drank some stuff that I thought was pretty deadly, so I didn't get hurt. So I think that that's working in my life, too. <laughs> Jesus said, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. The works that we do should bear witness of our lives. Most assuredly, Mark, John 14, 12, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father, and whatever you ask in my name, now this is good, Amen. that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Amen. Paul said, <laughs> in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not continue or come to you with excellence of speech, but of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with it persuasive words, of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and power. Do you see how important the Spirit is here? 
no matter what we speak, if it is not touched and moved and anointed by the Holy Spirit, it's not going to accomplish one thing. So that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. You see, we need the power of God. It's not just the word of God. It's not just worshiping and praise. We need the moving power of the living God in this day and time. Right now. Where the work of the kingdom is being done, the Holy Spirit comes to do his work. The Holy Spirit is the essential part of evangelism and missionary effort. He came to cause us to evangelize our communities, Samaria and Judea and Jerusalem, the place where we live. But if we're not doing the work, the Holy Spirit will not be working miracles. Do you understand what's happened to the church? The church, for the greatest part, is churching the church. They're not trying to church the world any longer. Now, if you're testifying and you're witnessing out there, you can rest assured that the Holy Spirit is going to work a miracle for you. And all you have to do is step up and believe it and say it and pray the prayer. This is the truth. Yes, it is. Wherever it is, don't be afraid. Do what God said, and God said, I will work the miracle. There will be signs and wonders that will follow because you spoke the living word. Amen. I'm trying to encourage you today to speak to people. I'm trying to encourage you to build the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not just for me. It's for you. Amen. You never know where God's going to take you tomorrow. You never know what God's going to have you doing tomorrow. You need to be continually preparing yourself in prayer and in the word and in the worship for the spirit of God to do great and mighty things for you. Even greater works than Jesus did are available to you. His glory, his power. Jesus took Satan, made a show of him openly, Colossians 2.15 and Revelations 1.18 and 20. The church is called to continue the work. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.9 says that we are to be making known. Now listen to this. Mark this down in your Bible. We, the church, are to be making known to the principalities and power in high places Mm -hmm. the power of God. In other words, what that means is you show the demons... You show the demons. You take authority over them. You take authority over that situation by the name of Jesus. And you tell Satan, you take your hands off. You demon of whatever that you're trying to control my home, my family, my church, my situation. In the name of Jesus, I bind your working power and I command you to loose your hold. That's what you, as a child of God, have within your authority. He said, I give you authority over all of the power of the enemy. And when the Holy Spirit is working within you, that's what you have. And if you've never been infilled with the Holy Spirit or you've let it die down, you need a refilling uh, and you need to have the total infilling of the Holy Spirit. And it's not hard, people. All you have to do is say, Lord, uh, fill me up with your Holy Spirit uh, and then let your praise and worship begin to roll. I guarantee you it's all going to happen right through you for his glory. Stand to your feet.